السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ورتل القرآن ترتيلا صدق الله العظيم إن الله ملاكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما الله رب محمد صلى عليه وسلم نحن عباد محمد صلى عليه وسلم صلاة وسلاما عليك يا سيدي يا حبيبي يا رسول الله In the previous covenant chapter we learned about the importance of tajweed reciting the Quran with tartil reciting the Quran as closest as possible as it was revealed upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam i.e. with tajweed not only obviously ourselves implementing that rule but then passing it on to other people if you know tajweed if you know the science of learning the Quran properly reciting it correctly then try your best to reform other people's recitation by teaching them the rules of tajweed this is an amana given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we teach people the Quran it's unfortunate unfortunate it's quite unfortunate that in this day and age we can read a lot of books we read a lot some people don't even do that but in terms of reciting the Quran we never do that and this is the great disappointment upon the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi where we try and be at the forefront in doing optional deeds in gaining our rights in demanding our rights from other people where this is a right given by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to this Ummah this is a right that you learn the Quran teach it to other people hold fast to it deem halal whatever Quran says halal and deem haram whatever the Quran says as haram we completely forsake it we overlook it and thus we see our situation as it is today wherever we see around the globe we are humiliated rejected debased because we have taken we have you know lost this connection with the Quran and alhamdulillah as a new initiative in this masjid as you heard before in order to incite people towards reciting the Quran properly tomorrow inshallah we have a class after the dhuhr salah inshallah may I request all brothers to attend and pass this message across uh, to your friends inshallah <coughs> so last week alhamdulillah we learned about the importance of the Quran the excellence of those people who learn the Quran and then teach it to other people. This one hadith, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَهُ The best amongst you are those who learn the Quran themselves and then teach it to other people. When you learn tajweed, when you learn how to recite properly, within your family there may be one or two people who need to learn tajweed. Teach it to them. Teach them how to learn the Quran. The greatest thing that you can pass on as a sadaqa jari, as a perpetual charity, is to teach someone how to recite the Qur'an properly. Because, as Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, if one person taught me a harf of the Qur'an, he has made me his student. He has become my ustad, my teacher. Okay? And the great teacher is the one who teaches his students how to recite the Qur'an properly. And this is what we all can do, starting with our own families, starting with our own friends, our own children, our nephews and nieces, who spend most of the time on the iPhone and iPad and entertainment, force them first, and then through dhok and shawq of their own, to recite the Qur'an. Make them recite the Qur'an properly. Teach them, starting off with the individual letters of the Qur'an. These are where they are recited from. This is how you pronounce this compound word and so forth. For example, the most difficult letters, one of the most difficult letter in the Arabic alphabet is Ain. And obviously, Al-Ha. Teach them that. 
And once they get the grasp of it, inshallah, they will never forget. It's one thing. You only learn Tajweed once, inshallah, properly, and then you remember it all your entire life. It's just that big step that you take. And thereafter, everything's easy. So then Imam Abdul Wahab al-Sha'ani radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he continues this topic on the Qur'an, its etiquettes and adab, and he says, أُخِذَ عَلَيْنَا الْأَلْعَهْدُ الْعَامِ بِرَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَالِي وَصَحْبِ وَسَلَّمْ أَنْ نَسْتَعِدَّ بِالطَّهَارَةِ لِقِرَاءَةِ الْقُرْآنِ this covenant has been taken from us from the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa that we prepare ourselves with tahar, with cleanliness when we recite the Qur'an. Now here you might think that we obviously do perform ablution when we recite the Qur'an but not obviously because if you're reciting the Qur'an off by heart you don't need ablution. But even then Imam Shani Rahmatu says as the adab of the Qur'an have ablution. Though it is not a, a condition for people who recite it off by heart. For those who touch the Quran, لا يمسه إلا المطهرون Only the pure people can touch the Quran. They have to be in a state of purity. ونأمر أصحابنا بذلك بنية تعظيم كلام الله عز وجل ونية سجود التلاوة إذا قرأنا آية سجدة أو سمعناها. Also to prepare ourselves if you're in a state of ablution and you recite سجدة التلاوة. A ayat of the Qur'an which necessitates prostration. There are 14 maqamat, 14 places in the Qur'an where if you, uh, if you recite them or if you are sat and someone recites it and you hear it, then upon the tali and the sami, upon the reciter and the listener, you have to perform sajda tilawat. Many a times we delay it. Many a times we even forget. We should not do that. Because of the hadith that is coming afterwards about the state of shaitan when you perform sajda at that time. When Allah says, perform sajda, and then you immediately do it, see the state of shaitan as, as mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet, so he's humiliated, he gets infuriated. So don't delay, do sajda today. Inshallah. Okay? Don't, don't delay it, do sajda um, as quickly as you can. If you are in a situation where you cannot perform sajda at that time, it's not convenient, and so forth, then you recite this verse of the Qur'an. After the ayat of sajda, recite this verse of the Qur'an, سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا غُفْرَانَكَ رَبَّنَا وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرِ سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا Oh Allah, we have heard. وَأَطَعْنَا We have obeyed. غُفْرَانَكَ We seek your forgiveness. رَبَّنَا Oh our Lord, وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرِ Towards you is the return. If you recite this verse of the Qur'an, insha'Allah, you will not get the sin of deliberately delaying the sajda when you are commanded to do so in the Qur'an. وَيَتَعَيَّنُ ذَلِكَ أَدَبًا مُتَأَكِّدًا مُتَأَكَّدًا عَلَى التُّجَّارِ وَالْمُبَاشِرِينَ الَّذِينِ يَحْضُرُونَ الْمَسَاجِدَ قَبْلَ الصَّلَوَاتِ فِي مِثْلِ جَامِعِ الْأَزْهَرِ وَنَحْوِهِ And this adab of being in a state of ablution before namaz and before preparing yourself for the Qur'an, being in a state of ablution, okay? always to be in a state of ablution, this is more mu'akkad and emphasized on those businessmen or those people who uh, just sit in the mosques. He says here like Jamil Azhar. Jamil Azhar, even, if, even now it is with the, in the city, in the entire city center. And you see a lot of people just sitting there with their bags of fruit and vegetable, just snoring away, sitting down, just relaxing and so forth. So he says, especially for them, they need to be prepared with wudu. And then he explains why. فَيَجْلِسُونَ مُحْدِثِينَ فِي لَغْوٍ وَغَفْلَةٍ بَلْ وَغِيبَةٍ Because of not being in a state of ablution, which does not make them prepared for the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are sat in mosques like Jam al-Azhar or any other mosque, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, muhdithin, talking about nonsense, laghu. And you should remember one thing here, there's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, people who sit in the masjid, in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, talking about the worldly things, worldly matters, matters which do not concern them at all, then all of their sins are taken away. They are obliterated and burnt away just as fire burns a piece of wood. كَمَا تَأْكُلُ النَّارُ الحطب. This is the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It takes us so much to actually do a good deed and it's so easy to waste it. And then he says, rather they sit in heedlessness, they start talking with one another, they backbite one another. 
they sit together to go into the mosque for the niyyah of ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But instead of that, they sit in the mosques and they start doing ghiba. There's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the alam of qiyamah is that people will start shouting in the mosques. There will be people who will come to the mosques to talk about worldly matters. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when you see these people, don't sit with them. Allah is not bothered about them. Allah takes no consideration. Allah is not concerned about them. Because they are not concerned about the etiquettes of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We already learned uh, in many covenants before uh, this chapter about the way the awliya used to enter the mosque. In a state of fear and used to tremble and shiver. Shaykh Ali Khawas rahmatullah alayhi, he would never attend the mosque on his own. He would always have someone in front of him. Because he was scared that I'm going in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I can't, see, I can't show my face to Allah. Let him go before, before myself. In the hadra of Allah, in the, in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the place of munajat. This is the place of dhikr of Allah. This is the place of you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't t- bring the third person in. Don't bring the dunya in. It is you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. وَرُبَّمَا يَمْكُثُونَ بِلَا طَهَارَةٍ حَتَّى تُقَامُ الصَّلَاةِ Many a times what happens is these people just come into the mosque and the jamaat is about to happen and they not, not perform an ablution and then they go last minute. فَيَذْهَبُونَ الْوُضُ They go to perform ablution. فَتَفُوتُهُمْ صَلَاةُ الْجَمَاعَةِ أَوْ بَعْضُهَا So they miss... The entire jamaat or sometimes even a few rakats. فَلْيَتَنَبَّهِ الْجَالِسُ فِي مَحَلٍ يُتْلَى فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ وَيُصُلِّ فِيهِ الْجَمَاعَةُ لِمِثْلِ ذَلِكِ So those people who sit in a place where there's a recitation of the Qur'an done, like the mosques or where people pray with the jamaat, they should always be vigilant about preparing themselves by performing ablution well in advance. So you don't miss even a rakat. There's awliya kiram who never miss the first takbir of each namaz. They never miss the Allahu Akbar behind the Imam. Always used to be behind the Imam at the, at the first saf, behind the Imam. And this is the etiquette that we should all uh, adopt as well, insha'Allah. فَإِنْ عَرَفَ مِنْ نَفْسِهِ عَدَمَ السَّلَامَةِ مِنَ اللَّغْوِ فِي الْمَسْجِدِ فَضْلًا عَلِ الْغِيبَةِ فَلْيَجْلِسْ خَارِجَ الْمَسْجِدِ لِيَفُوزَ بِالسَّلَامَةِ He says here, if you, if you are not sure, if you uh, fear, that if you're going to come into the mosque and then you're going to stay for a, sh- for a long period of time, you will indulge in ghiba, in namima, in, in slandering, in mockery, in lying, in deception, in joking, then leave immediately. He says here, masjid. Let him go out of the mosque, let him sit outside the mosque. Because these are the places of Allah, these are the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala built only for the dhikr of Allah and dhikr of Allah alone. That is it. And then coming on to the excellence of performing the sajda, immediately the Prophet ﷺ said, as narrated by Imam Muslim, Imam Ibn Majah, Imam Al-Bazzar, إِذَا قَرَأَ ابْنُ آدَمَ السَّجْدَةَ فَالسَّجْدَ اَعْتَزَلَ الشَّيْطَانُ يَبْكِي يَقُولِ يَا وَيْلَهُ وَفِي رِوَايَةٍ يَا وَيْلِي أُمِرَ ابْنُ آدَمَ بِالسُّجُودِ فَسَجَدَ فَلَهُ الْجَنَّةِ وَأُمِرْتُ بِالسُّجُودِ فَأَبَيْتُ فَلِيَنَّارِ When you perform a sajda'i tilawat, immediately, inshaAllah. Or whenever is uh, feasible, convenient for you. When the son of Adam performed a sajda, اِعْتَزَلَ الشَّيْطَانُ The shaitan goes away from him. Yabki, he starts crying. And he starts to say, Ya Wailah or Ya Waili, I am perished. Woe unto me. Umir ibn Adam bi sujood the son of Adam was commanded to perform sajda fa sajada falahu janna he performs sajda and therefore he is for him is janna wa umirtu bi sujood fa abaytu faliyan nar and i was also commanded to perform sajda to the nur in, shining in the forehead of Hazrat Adam alayhi salam but i rejected and for me is the hellfire so you you are by doing that act the simple act of doing sajda tilawat Promptly, correctly, you are debasing shaitan, humiliating him. And this is what we want. In another hadith of the Prophet sallallahu Imam al-Bazzar says, And the Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kutibat indahu surat al-najm. People were writing surat al-najm in the company of the Prophet sallallahu They were writing wahi. Obviously you should remember that it wasn't compiled in the, the Quran was not compiled in a mushaf as we see it today, in, in a book form. It was only compiled in the time of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu, when Hazrat Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, approached Hazrat Abu Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. 
And he said, and Hazrat Umar is one of them upon whose tongues Haq is engraved. The truth is engraved on the tongue of Umar. I.e. Haq is with Umar and Umar is with Haq, is with the truth. So he approached Amir Mu'mineen Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu. This is after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam veiled himself. And he said, Ya, ya Amir Mu'mineen, the battle of Yamama has happened. The battle of Yamama against Musalima the, the liar. In which it's, it has been recorded about 2,000 Hufad companions who memorized the Qur'an, they were martyred in that battle. He said, if this continued and we were to confront our enemy and counter them in the battlefields, then there will not remain even a single hafiz on the face of this earth. So why don't we compile the Qur'an in a book form? Whose idea was this? Umar ibn Khattab, inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazrat Abu Siddiq, initially he felt hesitant and he said, how can we do something which was not in the ahd of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Hazrat Umar convinced him and said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the chest of Umar ibn Abu Siddiq and then he appointed Hazrat Zaid ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu. Hazrat Zaid ibn Thabit, the compiler of the Qur'an, the muratibul Qur'an, someone who collated the Qur'an together. And Hazrat Zaid ibn Thabit says, look at the companions, how much they did to compile the Qur'an. The Qur'an which we have forsaken. The Qur'an which we just leave on our shelves with dust to gather on top and open it in the khatm of the Qur'an. In, even in khatm of the Qur'an we see people, uh, the household, are sat there just flicking through pages and not reciting probably even with a tasbih or just sat there uh, yawning or on their mobile phones whilst they want other people to recite the Qur'an. This is not the right of the Qur'an. The right of the Qur'an is you treat it properly. That you show that uh, passion and this zeal and this love for the Qur'an as the Sahaba had. As Zaid ibn Thabir radiallahu anhu said, if Amir Mu'mineen Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu was to command me to move a mountain from my, from my place, to move it, an entire sturdy mountain from a place, that would have been easier for me than to collate the Qur'an as, a, as one book. So difficult, so difficult, he had so much hardships he had to endure. And then he says, I searched for, uh, for the verses of the Qur'an, people had verses of the Qur'an written on slates, on leaves, on camel skin, on deer skin. I collated every single verse of the Qur'an. And remember the tartib is also tawqifi, it is uh, divine, that how the tartib of the Qur'an is. It is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, compiled it in that order. And the, until he says, I found one verse of the Qur'an, the final verse of the Qur'an, I think it was, وَاتَّقُوا يَوْمًا تُرْجَعُونَ فِيهِ إِلَى اللَّهِ ثُمَّ تَوَفَّى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ مَا كَسَبَتْ وَهُمْ لَا يُظْلَمُونَ And every single verse which he got, he had he, he uh, had a condition that he would have two witnesses. Say so for example, you had a verse of the Qur'an, I would need two witnesses to corroborate the fact that you have, you've heard that verse from the Prophet that this is a, a night of the Qur'an. With two witnesses. But there was only one Sahabi, the final Sahabi who went to, to get the final verse. Hazrat Khuzayma radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He went to Hazrat Khuzayma radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And he had no witnesses with him. But his witness was equivalent to two himself. Because of an earlier incident which happened with him and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Where Hazrat Khuzayma radiallahu ta'ala was with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A Jew came. And he sold a horse to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for an X amount. It was fixed. The price was fixed. When the Jew left that place... The transaction was done, the agreement was made. The Jew had uh, gone a few steps away and he had been approached by a Bedouin who gave a higher price, who bid a higher price than what the Prophet ﷺ gave. So the Yahudi said, I've sold it to him. The Prophet ﷺ said, you've, oh, you've already agreed with me. This is the trade of the Jews. I've already agreed with you on a fixed price, on a set price. Now you are turning away from your word. Then the, Prophet, uh, then the Jew said, who is, who is the witness to this transaction? Hazrat Khuzma was there, Hazrat Khuzma said, Ya Rasulullah I am a witness to you. He said, O Khuzma, O Khuzma, we haven't really heard the transaction properly. You weren't really involved in the direct conversation which we had and the price. How can you bear witness on this? He said, Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when we bear witness to things which are greater than that, matters of the unseen, about believing in Allah and the angels and the Yawm Al-Qiyamah, which we have not seen, when we bear testimony and we attest and certify to what you say, this is something very simple. I testify that you have been given that price by the Jew and I bear witness to this. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then said as a bishara to Khuzayma, to see, he was seeing the future 
knowledge of the NC of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet said, O Khuzayma, your testimony is equivalent to two people. And the Prophet was seeing the time when Zaid ibn Thabi will go to each companion and they will have two witnesses except for one verse of the Quran where there should be no witness. That will be Hazrat Khuzayma radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Zaid ibn Thabi took that verse from Hazrat Khuzayma radiallahu ta'ala anhu and then Hazrat Zaid ibn Thabi compiled the entire Quran. This is the effort that they took in to compile the entire Quran in the book form. And then later on, obviously, the Arab was put on according to one narration, Abu al-Aswad al-Du'ali, according to one narration, Hajjaj ibn Yusuf had appointed some other people under him to put the Arab of the Qur'an. So remember this, this Qur'an is a great book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's been much hardships undertaken to give it to you in the book form. Imagine if you had to uh, collate verses of the Qur'an from slates, from leaves that you had in your home. One verse is here, one verse is there, one verse is there. The Qur'an is there. Plus there's Fatah al Dhammaka, so there's Arab on the Qur'an. Even if you don't know Arabic grammar, yeah, Alhamdulillah, the Qur'an is there, you can recite it easily. So connect yourself with the Qur'an. So this hadith was uh, narrated by Imam Bazza who says the Surah Al-Najm was re- write, uh, written in the company of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ السَّجِدَةَ sajada. When the eye of sajada came, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam performed sajada. Hazrat Abu Huraira says, We also perform sajda with the Prophet. ﷺ. Not only this, was sajdati dawatu wal qalamu as a mu'jiz of the Prophet, ﷺ, the ink pot and the pen also performed sajda at that time. So this is in Bazaar. The ink pot by which they were writing the verse of sajda, the verse of Surah Al Najm, the verses of Surah Al Najm, and the pen by which they were writing it all performed sajda towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all the, Quran, uh, all the tawfiq to attach ourselves with the Qur'an, to recite it daily, as is going to come in the next khaban, and nata'ahad bil Qur'an, to hold fast to the Qur'an. Because people who have held fast to the Qur'an, the Qur'an has elevated them. And those who have forsaken the Qur'an, the Qur'an has humiliated them. And this is one of the alama of qiyamah, that Muslims will be ignorant because of the fact that they will lose the thing that makes them strong and that is holding fast with the Qur'an. The Prophet ﷺ said in one hadith, I am going to leave behind with you two things, which if you hold fast to, you will never go astray. Kitab Allahi wa itrati or Kitab Allahi wa sunnati, in another narration. The book of Allah and my Ahl Bayt, who are the true depiction, the true practical implementation of the commandments of the Qur'an. Another ver- version, the Kitab Allahi wa sunnati, the book of Allah and my hadith. And we have forsaken, forsaken both of them. We don't even know what is written in the Quran. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me first of all and all of yourselves who are sat here listening and those who are listening uh, at home the tawfiq to recite the Quran daily, to act upon its commands. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the Quran an intercessor for us on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. اللهم صل على سيدنا مولانا محمد معد نجود والكرم وآله وصحبه وبارك وسلم اللهم فعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا من فضلك علما يقربنا منك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها فاغفر لها اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع ومن قلب لا يخشع ومن نفس لا تشبع ومن دعوة لا يستجاب لها اللهم ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم إن الله ملائكتهم يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما الله رب محمد صلى عليه وسلم نحن عباد محمد صلى عليه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين